Welcome to my basement! In this episode we will see if I can control my new smart plug with code. So I bought some uh, smart plugs uh, and the reason I bought these plugs is that they are rated for 16 amps and up to 3680 watts and the reason that's uh, interesting for me is that uh, I can use them to power my brewery. Today I'm using two solid states relays that can handle 32 amps, uh, it's a bit more than I need. And I control the solid state relays with uh, a Raspberry Pi. But lately I've been uh, concerned that they are not powered correctly. Uh, the power output seemed to flicker. And uh, looking at the information for the solid state relays I use, uh, you are supposed to turn them on by supplying 5 volts. Uh, I knew that when I bought them and that then I had an electrician to test uh, that uh, they could indeed be turned on and off with the uh, 3.3 volts so it kind of works but uh, I'm not sure it works a hundred percent under load the reason I haven't looked into smart plugs before is that uh, the cheap ones or the available ones uh, Often are rated at uh, 10 amps, which is uh, too little for my use case. Uh, so yeah. The idea today is to see if I can control this uh, plug or plugs uh, using Python. So let's uh, try to install the library needed. Okay, so I've already prepared this uh, plug with the mobile app and what you do is to uh, basically scan the QR code in here, uh, download the app and uh, set up this so that it can access the Wi-Fi network you want to run it on. During the setup process you are setting up an account at the TP link and the account name and username and password is the same you use when you try to operate this one remotely and according to the scripts you can either uh, pass that parameters in as uh, username and password or you can set system variables with uh, the username and password i will use the environment variables to hide the username and password from you uh, but yeah you can use whatever you want so i've set uh, two environment variables so let's uh, try to run casa discover And right now I have nothing plugged in, so yeah, that's about correct. Seems like the software is working at least. So yeah, as you can see, this is not a Python script. It's a compiled uh, binary, uh, which is useful for testing. But uh, the documentation also, of course, uh, come into how you can do it in Python and that will be next but uh, let's see if we just uh, can get in touch with this one so the little light on the side started out with red but now turned blue so yeah let's uh, change the correct window and see if we can find anything and we did or didn't yeah we did let's see so 
the state of the device is true. Interesting. Uh, hardware 1.0, 1, 123 is the software version. MAC address, signal level, not sure if that's good or bad, but it's only, yeah, two meters away from the Wi Fi, so should be good. And you can also read out uh, the consumption value for today or this month. And I think also you can read the current value. Is that? Yeah, current consumption. And I have nothing plugged in, so that's probably okay. So I'm really happy it booted really quickly and got online really quickly. Uh, I just plugged it in. I think it took about no, three, four seconds for the little LED to move from red to green. So that's good. Let's uh, see if we actually can turn it on and off. So to test operation, I've found my uh, Minecraft lamp uh, as the test subject. And according to the documentation, we just need to find the host address and uh, I don't remember that, so let's uh, do Casa Discover, and this will actually find all your TP-Link uh, hardware on your network, uh, or all supported hardware at least. Found one device, and uh, it's a smart plug, and the host address is this. Copy that, then. Uh, Let's try to turn it on. Yeah, I heard some kind of... Uh, yeah. Cool. This one hardly uses any power at all, so it probably will take some time from my turning off the power until it will actually shut down but I heard the switch uh, switching off at least but it okay yeah there it's off cool let's uh, see if we can get uh, the Python script working as well okay so I fixed the script from the tutorial it doesn't say that you should uh, disconnect uh, but if you don't it will throw an error saying that there's a channel open and you should figure it out close it down so yeah I updated it with that and I also fetched the username and password from the environment the variables uh, of the OS which I exported from the shell not so long ago and yeah that's basically it and it actually works so it's uh, really easy to get going actually let's uh, see if uh, the script now connects uh, to the host address which is that specific uh, plug uh, and turns it on Yeah, I heard the click and maybe the light uh, also comes on. It's a very dark red first and then it's a green and now you can see it a bit better. So yeah, it works. Nice. So yeah, we got uh, the Topo P115 working in the end uh, and the library I found for it, uh, the Python Casa library was uh, pretty good actually. It was very easy to use and also had built-in tools to verify that your smart plug actually works before you start uh, writing your own code. So yeah, probably still have to test more to see if it's uh, 
stable, meaning that it keeps uh, online and uh, operates even after a few days of use, but yeah. So not sure if uh, these will replace the solid state relays for my brewery yet. Uh, the one problem I noticed was that the library required a lot of dependencies and my brewery is uh, currently running on VX Python, which is hard to update and uh, get going without breaking changes. So I'm actually not sure I'm able to fully update the Raspberry Pi running the brewery so that I can install the software to run this. But it might be time to throw VX Python under the bus uh, regardless and uh, go to Qt Python or PySide as it's uh, called now. But yeah, we will see. At least I now know that this works and it can be controlled uh, via software. If you like uh, content like this, please be sure to like and subscribe and I do hope to see you next time.